Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to play polyphonic audio in Godot. So I'll be showing you a system which I typically use to play audio, and this is pretty efficient and also allows for easily changing audio resources as you won't have to define the path inside your script anywhere, and you won't need to make any constants or preloads for any of your audio files since they will be loaded into resources. Now an explanation of what this system will do is we'll essentially add the functionality to play audio which overlaps and you will be able to define different tags. So instead of calling like play the specific sound effect file, you'll be able to just call play like a jump effect and then the jump effect will point towards a resource key and it will just look up the audio stream for that key. Some benefits to this system are one, if you have things like enemies, you'll be able to define an audio library and have the same keys. So basic things like a hit effect or maybe like apply damage or something like that, but you'll be able to define it inside an audio library but for the actual stream that is playing, you'll be able to define that specifically inside of each instance separately outside of the base scene. Another benefit to using this system is you'll be able to play overlapping audio. Now you may have noticed that if you use just a generic audio stream player 2D, you can only assign one audio stream as the stream property. And for this instance, I've loaded in my checkpoint sound effect. And then if we play the game, I'm just assigning the play to my space key. But if you listen, it'll play the sound effect. But if we play it really quickly consecutively, it will cut itself off. So when the new sound effect starts, the old one will stop. Now you can override this with the max polyphony value inside of the audio stream player 2D. So if we set this to something like 10 and we tried this again, the audio would now overlap. Now the only problem with this is if you want different audio streams, you'd have to replace the value inside of the stream property. And this would obviously remove your checkpoint sound effect and make it so that you have to play a different one. Now this system is obviously going to fix that, but to set it up, we're going to make a few basic classes. So I'm gonna go into my scripts folder in the bottom and I'm gonna right click and create a new folder called my classes and then inside of that folder i'm going to right click and create a new script and this script is going to be called sound effect.gd and we're going to extend resource so inside of the inherit property we'll say resource if you forget to do this you can always open up the script and change the value right here but just make sure we are extending resource and then we can define the class name with class underscore name and the value is going to be sound effect and make sure to do capital case. And inside of here, we're just going to need two basic things. So we'll need a key for the sound effect at export bar, and this will be called the tag and we'll set it to a string. And again, this is what we're going to be using to identify what audio stream we're playing. And then for the actual audio stream, we simply type at export bar, and this will be the stream and the type will be an audio stream. And this is all we'll need for the sound effect class. So we can go ahead and save this. And then we're gonna right click in the my classes folder once again, create a new script, same thing where we're inheriting from resource. And the name of this script is going to be audio library. And an audio library, once we create it, is essentially going to be a collection of sound effects. And this is because statically typed dictionaries aren't yet supported in Godot. So if we created a new audio library and then we exported a dictionary of sound effects, we wouldn't be able to manually define like we want the keys to be strings and the values to be an audio stream. And this should be supported in future versions of Godot, but I'm on 4.2.1 currently and we cannot do this. So the easy workaround, which saves the user a lot more time, is just to export a custom resource like this. And then this is essentially the key to the dictionary and this is the value, but it's easier to kind of create entries to that dictionary on the fly. So instead of a dictionary, since we're using this as the entry in our audio library, we're just gonna export a new variable and this is going to be sound effects 
and the type is going to be an array and this is where we can statically type and make sure it's an array of sound effects. And then I also forgot to define the class name at the top of this script so just make sure you type class underscore name and we're going to say audio library. Now when we save this we can go into our file explorer. I've created a resources folder but we're going to right click inside of that, create a new resource and search for audio library. If we create a new audio library give it an example name and then when we open this inside of our inspector panel on the right hand side we're going to have a list of sound effects and when we click into this we can add a new element and in here we just define a new sound effect and inside of here we can give it a tag so in this case we could say like this is the jump sound effect and then the stream we could quick load in the player jump and now this is kind of the same thing like I was talking about where you have a dictionary except it's all statically typed. So we don't need to manually assign the stream value as the key. So I'm gonna delete this custom resource that I've made and we're gonna finish out these methods inside of our audio library class. So inside of this script, we're going to need one method. We're gonna call it function get audio stream and we're gonna require a tag inside of here. So we'll type underscore tag the type will be a string and then inside of here the first thing we're going to do is define an index we're going to set it to negative one and then we're going to check if our tag is valid if it is then we're going to loop through the sound effect so say for sound in sound effects and then we'll increase the index by one so say index plus equals whoops index plus equals one and then we'll check if our sound dot tag is equal to our underscore tag then we will break and then after we break we will simply return sound effects and the index will be index and the value is going to be stream now we also want to check else so we're going to say else which means that our tag is not valid we are going to print error and it will say no tag provided cannot get sound effects. And this would obviously mean that we do not have an audio stream to return. So if we get to this point, we're going to return null. And now that we have these two classes defined, we need to actually utilize them. So we're gonna make a new scene at the top. It's gonna be an other node. And we're gonna search for an audio stream player 2D. And I'm gonna name this one polyphonic audio player and we will save it inside of our scenes folder. And we're going to add a script to this object and we're gonna save it inside of our scripts folder. And there's a couple things we need to do inside of here. So first off, we need to export a variable called audio library and the type will be our audio library class. We then need to call the ready function. So we'll say function underscore ready and inside of here, we simply want to define a new polyphonic audio player as the stream. So we're gonna say stream equals audio stream polyphonic dot new. And next we want to set the polyphony value of this new object. So in this case, it defaults to 32 and that's usually fine, but we're gonna make a new export variable. We're gonna call it max polyphony and it's going to be an int and it will start at 32. And then we simply set stream dot polyphony equal to our max. Save that. And I guess this value is already defined. So we're gonna say custom and then we will set max polyphony to custom max polyphony. Now we can reset this value as this was just for demonstration purposes but we will need a single method inside of this polyphonic audio player. And we're gonna call this method play sound effect from library. And we will require a tag. Once again, we're gonna say underscore tag, set this to a string. And this method is going to return void. Now, first up, we would like to check if our tag is valid. If it is, then we can retrieve the audio stream, but we'd like to store it inside of a variable. So we're gonna say var audio stream, and we'll set this equal to audio library dot get audio stream, and we will require our tag, which is right here. 
Next up, we need to check if our audio stream is already playing. If it is not playing, we need to start it. Otherwise, if we try to get the stream playback when it's not playing, it will return null and the game will crash. So we would like to check if not playing, then we are going to say self.play. And this will ensure that we're always playing the audio. Next up, we need to store our stream playback. So we say var polyphonic stream, whoops, polyphonic stream playback. And we are going to set this one equal to self dot get stream underscore playback. And the last thing we need to call inside of this method is simply the polyphonic stream playback. And inside of here, we will call play underscore stream. And we need a value, which is the stream, which we've obtained up here. So we simply put audio stream inside of that function and everything should work as intended. Now we can also add some quality of life feature here. So we're gonna say else once again, and we will print on error, which is no tag provided cannot play sound effect. And this is just for the user. Now this is the last script that we'll need to define. So what we're gonna do is create a few examples for this. So I'm gonna go into my game world and I'm gonna select the player and we're going to add a child node to this player and it's going to be our polyphonic audio player.tscn. And this is the scene that you'll want to instance if you would like to play overlapping audio or use audio libraries in this way. So once we've instanced this, all we do is go to the audio library property and we select a new audio library and inside of our player sound effects, we can just add a ton of new sound effect entries and we are going to drag in all of our sound effects. So I'm gonna make a new sound effect called checkpoints and I will load up my checkpoint, checkpoint sound. We're gonna make another entry. We're gonna call this one jump and I will load up my jump sound and we'll make one more here. I think we, I have a take damage. Yeah, so I have a enemy hit. So we're gonna say take damage and we will load up this enemy hit. Now, as you can see from this already, if we change the name or move any of our sound effects, they will still be valid as we are looking them up inside of the resource. So this way you don't have to worry about going back into your player script and changing all your constants or preloads or whatever. And this is a lot more efficient in my opinion. Now this will also play overlapping audio, obviously, like I said, and it won't be limited to just a single stream property, but you'll be able to play all of these sound effects at the same time overlapping. So how do we actually play these sound effects? Well, I'm gonna make a new script on the player. I'm gonna put this in the script folder. So we're going to go into our script and then we're going to go into our scene view hold control and drag in this polyphonic audio player. So then we now have a reference to it. And all we're gonna do is say function underscore input events. And we're going to null out the event, but we're gonna check if input class dot is action just pressed. And we're gonna say play audio. Then we will simply call polyphonic audio player dot and we got to remember the name of the function, which is play sound effect from library. And the sound effect we're going to play will just be a tag, which will be jump. And since I also have this object playing audio, I'm just gonna delete this for now. And now we can see that if we run the game, we can play the jump sound effect and it overlaps, but it's essentially as easy as that. We just need to pass in the jump key and it will reference our audio library's correct sound effect that has the jump key attached to it and get the stream. So let's say we had a new sound effect for the jump that we wanted to load in. We could simply just replace it here with something like the shoot sound effect. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but now we'll play the shoot sound. And like I said before, you can play multiple audio streams at the same time. So we could copy this line for now, just cause I don't want to set up any more inputs, but let's say we played the sound effect for checkpoint. We'll copy that key, paste it in the function. And when we play this now, it will play two sound effects at the same time. 
only using a single audio player node. So that's about it for this video. If you have any ways of optimizing the system, make sure to leave them in the comments. I have tried a few different systems for playing audio in the past, and this one is by far my favorite currently. But again, with this method, let's say you had, which I actually set up for this example, I just never got to them. But in the enemy class, you could do something like define some tags, which are common for like enemy hits or enemy sound effects. And then for each different enemy, in its polyphonic audio player, you could simply change its resources up and you might even want to move the audio library value into the actual node and then that might be a bit more efficient for something like this, but you can mess around with this and kind of come up with your own system. This is kind of just a base for an idea and also just an example of how to use this audio stream polyphonic class as the documentation doesn't really have a lot of coverage. But thanks for watching the video and hope you learned something new. If you did, consider leaving a like and subscribing. And also make sure to join the Discord server, link in the description. Anyways, see you in the next one.